Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Jeremy Waterman, President of the China Center at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. It's great to see you all again this evening. Uh, uh, I have good news. Uh, we are now very much in the home stretch. Um, and I have additional good news because we're going to conclude this evening with a series of very dynamic and high-profile speakers. And it's my great pleasure and honor to be able to introduce the first of those speakers, Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes. Much like, much like the officials from Nevada and Nebraska who we heard from last night, Attorney General Reyes represents a state in Utah that also shares a significant commercial relationship with China that has delivered tremendous benefits to both economies. In 2017, Utah exported over a billion in goods and services to China. And that trade with China supports over 6,000 jobs in Utah. Chinese tourists bring to the state of Utah annually more than 150 million to the economy. In 2013, Sean Reyes was appointed as Utah's 21st Attorney General following a distinguished 14-year career in private practice, during which he argued cases before state and federal courts throughout the country, including the Utah Supreme Court and the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals. Since coming into office, Attorney General Reyes has led a reorganization of the Attorney General's office that has resulted in numerous significant victories against a broad array of criminal activity. Attorney General Reyes has established numerous training programs as well to improve protection for law enforcement officers, de-escalate violence in communities, and work with young people in the state to address a variety of social challenges. After winning election in 2014 by one of the largest, mar largest margins nationwide, Attorney General Reyes was chosen in 2015 by the Republican National Committee as one of its four national rising stars. All of this is to say, Attorney General Reyes has built up a highly impressive record of public service and is very much someone worth paying attention to, not only this evening, but in the years ahead. So without further ado, please welcome to the stage Attorney General Sean Reyes. Thank you, Jeremy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Ambassador Tsui. Datya Bang Shanghao. Thank you. You can clap for that. That's, uh, that's all the Mandarin we'll have tonight, from me, at least. And since Jeremy just gave most of my speech in his um, introduction, I'll hopefully uh, narrow this down. When I originally was asked to speak uh, I was a little nervous because it said um, 57 minutes, and so I frantically prepared uh, volumes and volumes of data. Um, what, what, what didn't come through was the hyphen between the five and the seven. It said you have five to seven minutes, and so then I've been frantically getting rid of information now, uh, hoping to make sure that uh, I don't take more time than is necessary. I would like to thank Orasis and Dr. Richter very much for convening this critical conference. I want to thank also Las Vegas Sands. Um, many of you heard from their president, Rob Goldstein, earlier. Uh, he has with him other members of his team, my good friend Andy Abood. And Las Vegas Sands is one of those corporate citizens that we are very proud of in America and they also get it when it comes to generating business between China and the United States. And so I want to thank Rob and the entire SANS team for bringing us as attorneys general from different states around um, the United States to be able to participate um, tonight. Thank you. You can give them a round of applause, too. If you don't, I might have to bust out some more Mandarin. So. Uh, now everybody's clapping there. Please no, don't do that. Um, I want to also thank uh, Jeremy Waterman, who, who gave me a generous introduction, uh, more generous than necessary, and his team at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. There have been tremendous allies and friends, too, uh, generating and keeping our economic engine uh, running 
here and abroad. And certainly not least, um, I would like to thank the China Federation of Industrial Economics and new friends that I've made uh, from that organization. Uh, I know many others have spent a lot of time putting this conference together. And again, I want to thank all of you for your efforts in convening um, this Orassis China conference. Um, I have a, a little bit of background information I'd like to share. Uh, some of it's a, a little personal. Uh, before I get to myself, uh, I, I do bring greetings from a very dear friend of mine. We've served together, and he also served with the ambassador, Ambassador Tsui. Um, that's our uh, former ambassador of the United States to Russia, Singapore, and to China, um, John Huntsman Jr. And Governor Huntsman asked me tonight to please convey his deepest appreciation to the people and the businesses of China. He has many friends there, and he has a great love for the people, the culture, and the relationship that uh, he played a role in helping to nurture. So I, I know that uh, he'd be upset if I didn't pass that along. You know, Utah, the state that I represent, as Jeremy mentioned, has long-standing ties to China. Some things you might not know that Jeremy didn't mention, we have the most dual immersion schools. These are K through 12 schools where young children learn English and Mandarin or English and Cantonese simultaneously. And in the entire United States, Utah has more of those schools than almost the rest of the country put together. Um, I myself am the first elected official statewide in the state from any minority background. And I think you'll, someone wanted to clap, that's fine. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm not sure that's a good thing, um, except that uh, it's taken them a while. And, uh, but now that I'm there, I'm, I'm very proud to represent uh, the Chinese community, the Chinese American community, and uh, other communities. Particularly for this reason, my, my father is from the Philippines, he's Spanish and Filipino. My mom, she's from Hawaii, she's Japanese and Hawaiian. And there had always been stories uh, that in our heritage, in our lineage, we had Chinese ancestors, but we were never able to find recorded information. And so over the last couple of years, I've taken several DNA tests. Some of you might have taken these. And are you interested in the results? So as it turns out, I have over 10% uh, of my blood that is Chinese blood. Um, and uh, thank you. And so you can now proudly say that the first, uh, first minority in office statewide in the state of Utah, at least in, in its, its state history, is Chinese uh, also. So I, I wanted, to, wanted to make sure you, you understand. I'm very proud uh, to be able to represent um, all of my different heritages. Um, I also would like to thank and explain just a little bit uh, about uh, an organization called the Attorney General Alliance. Um, I will lead tomorrow a delegation of my fellow attorneys general uh, as we travel to China to further relationships uh, at a sub-national level. And I think that's critical because I think the opportunities when it comes to economic and investment opportunities, trade opportunities, and we'll have a particular focus on legal matters, that the opportunities are there more robustly than ever at a sub-national level, state to state city to city, state to city. And so we're very enthused not only to learn more about what's making China so strong economically, technologically, but also to learn more about the advancements that China has made, very significant ones in the rule of law and in courts, for instance, intellectual property courts that have drawn praise the world over by people and observers. And this is what we intend to do we go in a spirit of humility to learn from our colleagues there 
and I think uh, we are in for uh, a, a treat. So I wanted to let you know and thank again the SANS organization for helping to facilitate that. Let me say this, the relationship between the United States and China is the most important bilateral relationship in the world, full stop. Thank you. And as I mentioned, there are significant opportunities. For us, we'll be exploring the ones in law and law enforcement, but also why you are here when it comes to education and the economy, the environment, empowerment. I'm gonna borrow a couple of points that Jeremy used in a letter that he penned for the program, and I thought they were so significant that I'm going to repeat them because they convey exactly how I feel about the opportunities where others see obstacles, entrepreneurs, leaders see opportunity. I heard Rob Goldstein talk about this today in his panel about Macau, and where no one else saw opportunity, Mr. Adelson saw opportunity. This is our opportunity together to be able to forge ahead in terms of culture, in terms of education, and in terms of the economy. So let me, let me make these points. You all, businesses, have acted as critical bridges between our two nations for decades. If you go back to 1979, you look at the gross import-export amount. Anybody off the top of their head know what that was? Roughly about $4 billion. And you think about the growth over that time today, the gross numbers, over $600 billion. And it's, it's been you, the business community, that has played a pivotal role in that. Now, despite challenges that have tested this relationship over the last several years, we must, we must continue to promote the benefits of US-China commercial and economic exchange. This continues to serve both of our countries and the entire world. Thank you. We must also continue to promote strong and enduring ties. And again, I'm, I'm borrowing from Jeremy's very eloquent um, letter. Expanding two-way trade and investment. Now, I came from that environment before this job. I ran a tech venture fund, so I was investing in companies. Some that had technology developed by Chinese Americans. Some that had a presence in China. So we must continue to promote those opportunities. We must continue to promote cooperation and support growth. As I mentioned earlier, we must do it nationally, but there are real opportunities at a local, subnational level. I like to think about the relationship between China and the United States economically as one of friendly competitors, not rivals or enemies, brothers and sisters who spur each other, who lead each other and push each other to do even better when it comes to developing services, products, and leading out in the world. Now, not all Americans, I want to be clear, not all of us in America understand why China needs to be strong. I do understand that. A strong China does not mean a weak America, and vice versa. A strong America does not mean that China is threatened. Together, in my view, they can both be strong, and the world will be much better off and stronger for it. <laughs> Let me share one final thought or story that is very meaningful uh, to my state. Just a few months ago, we celebrated the 150th anniversary of the Golden Spike that took place in the state of Utah. The Golden Spike represented the final piece of the building of the first transcontinental railroad 
in the United States. It was an incredible feat of engineering and of hard labor and of persistence. It was almost a miraculous one if you think about all of the obstacles that stood in the way of those who constructed from one coast to the other through solid mountains and granite, railroad tracks that became the lifeblood of the American economic engine in the 19th century. And this is the story that has not been told in America enough. And this was an opportunity for us, and we worked very hard to tell the story of Chinese workers who had come to America to support their families, who on their backs built the railroad. It wasn't exclusively them, but it was a majority of Chinese laborers. That's a story in America that for too long was left untold. I think it should be a point of pride for everyone in this room, whether you're American, Chinese, Chinese American, or American Chinese, it doesn't matter. It was a collaboration with a unified vision that was able to overcome every obstacle in its path. And I believe that that is a symbol, an analogy for the path forward for China and the United States, just like the Transcontinental Railroad. There'll be times when we'll confront obstacles, and they might seem mountainous, they might seem Herculean, but if there is an underlying trust and willingness to work together, a willingness to listen, to learn and understand each other, then I believe just like that miraculous transcontinental railroad that the United States and China together as friends, competitors, but friends and allies will be able to overcome any differences and truly build a world where our entire human family can live with less suffering and with more prosperity. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a wonderful evening, and God bless you. Thank you so much, Attorney General Reyes. What a wonderful speech. He talked about culture. He talked about the need to build bridges. And I think you are really a bridge builder. You are a change maker. Thank you so much. Let me now call on Rob Goldstein. And um, Rob, uh, you have been a wonderful host here in this wonderful hotel. That I think we all love this Venetian hotel, the first integrated hotel in the world, one of the best hotels in the world, a wonderful host. Rob, please join us on the stage. <laughs> when someone's speaking so eloquently and so positively about this company, we don't want you to stop. Uh, first of all, welcome to the Venetian Palazzo here in Las Vegas. We're very proud and honored to be able to uh, host this event. And I think the, uh, the day was very informative and very helpful. And I echo the, the comments made previously about the need for a strong China and a strong United States. They seem to work in tandem to everyone's benefit. And I think those of us in the room who spend time in these countries recognize the mutual benefits of working together towards a a stronger common goal, which is a world economy, which thrives for everybody. <clears throat> it's my honor to introduce our next guest. His years of respected public service are a great compliment to his impeccable professional and diplomatic credentials. He has served as his country as both ambassador to Japan <clears throat> and since 2013 ambassador here to the United States as China's ambassador to the United States. I've had the pleasure both this evening and previously to meet Ambassador Shui and many uh, meetings involving Mr. Adelson, my boss, and our chairman. I've always found him to be very reasonable, very intelligent, and a, a real diplomat in the sense he listens so well and adds so much value to every conversation. He's thoughtful, he's interesting, uh, he's thought-provoking, and he's the kind of person I think we're lucky to have here this evening to address the group 
about the very issues facing the world today and facing the United States and facing China. Um, I think it's extraordinary that people from different backgrounds and different countries can get together for a common goal, and which is, I think, a thriving world economy, which we all benefit from. Uh, we're very lucky and fortunate to have spent the last 15 years developing in Macau, and we've been privileged to be there. It's been an honor to spend uh, our country, our, our company's capital, developing opportunities for both uh, people in the Macanese people, but also for people in this country to go back and forth. Um, we found the relationship to be both inspiring, uh, profitable, and at times, uh, uh, like every great relationship, there's, there's times where you worry about how you can do your part successfully. Uh, the ambassador this evening spoke to us at a private session about these very challenges, and I think we're fortunate his comments this evening will be very insightful and help you understand the challenges ahead of us. Uh, without further ado, Ambassador Shui. Thank you very much, Mr. Goldstein, for your very warm words of introduction. And I really enjoyed our conversation earlier in the evening. And I should start by thanking our hosts for inviting me here to address this important event. Like Attorney General Ray, I was given some time limits. They said 10 to 12 minutes. But Unlike Attorney General Reyes, they did not put the two numbers together. <laughs> so they did not make it 1,012 minutes. <laughs> that made my preparation much easier. <laughs> but I would like to echo many of the points made by Attorney General Reyes and by Mr. Goldstein just now. I also believe a strong China, a strong America would help each other and do greater good for the entire world and serve the fundamental interests of our two great peoples. So this should be the goal that we should work together for. But it is my great pleasure to attend this Horasis China meeting tonight. Horasis is known for convening the global visions community, people who look unwaveringly to the future and I think in the last couple of days, this meeting has had in-depth exchanges on almost all aspects of China's development and China-US economic relations. And the timing could not have been better because this year marks the 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. China has gone through historic transformation in these 70 years and made unprecedented achievements. At the same time, as China enters a new era, it also faces a more complex domestic and international environment, which has not been made easier by the strained relations between China and the United States more recently. As we look forward to China's developing context for the coming decades, I think it would be helpful for us to put things in a perspective that will combine economics and politics so as to have a better understanding of the issues and policies as well as challenges and opportunities. And for that purpose, I would suggest we have to keep in mind the following. First, China pursues a development model that places the people at the center, which has proved to be an unfailing driving force for China's development. People play the decisive role in any country's development, 
And in the case of China, it is the people's aspiration for a better life that guides our policies. It also represents unlimited business opportunities. We will do what needs to be done to further promote the all-round development of our people, enhancing their sense of fulfillment, happiness, and security. For example, our web of medical insurance now covers more than 1.3 billion people, which means that practically everyone is medically insured in China. We have also brought over 900 million people under the umbrella of basic old age insurance. And a year from now, that means by the end of next year, China will have eliminated absolute poverty the first time in its history and will become a moderately prosperous society in all aspects. China's expanding middle-income population now consists 400 million people, and that number is set to double over the next 15 years. The purchasing power and economic potential of the 1.4 billion Chinese people has seen unprecedented growth as China continues to develop. The confidence, proactiveness, and creativity of the Chinese people promise a bright future for the country and its economic development. As a result of the ingenuity and zeal of its people, China's GDP expanded by 6.2% in the first three quarters of 2019, in spite of trade, war, and other external complexities. Major economic indicators have also remained positive and sound which speaks of the resilience, vitality, and potential of the Chinese economy. Second, China remains committed to deepening reform and opening up the country even wider, because we believe that this is the key for us to overcoming development challenges and ensuring the long-term vibrancy of the economy. China has fully opened its manufacturing sector, and the services sector is also catching up. The foreign investment law will go into force next year, January the 1st, providing a legal safeguard for foreign investment. The application of pre-establishment national treatment plus a negative list is extending to the whole spectrum of the Chinese economy. In particular, the negative list, which provides for the areas not open to foreign investment, is getting shorter every year. This year, the number of China's pilot free trade zones rose to 18 places, making our opening up sectorally more inclusive and geographically more balanced. China knows the importance of engaging with and learning from the rest of the world. We understand that cooperating with others is not a sign of weakness, but the discovery of infinite possibilities to improve people's lives. That explains why China has pursued the opportunity to trade with countries all over the world.
for instance, on November, on November the 5th this year, which is just next Tuesday, the second China International Import Expo will be held in my hometown, Shanghai. In the next five years, China will import over $10 trillion worth of goods and services. China will continue to take necessary steps to make our business environment more attractive, allowing us to compete with the best in the world. China will treat foreign and domestic investors alike and provide strict and rigorous protection of intellectual property rights. And this is a serious commitment by the Chinese government that will stand the test of time. According to the Doing Business 2020 report by the World Bank, China's ranking of ease of doing business rose 15 positions from last year. And for two years in a row, China has been among the 10 countries that have improved the most by this measure. MCHEM China's member companies have registered record high confidence in an open Chinese market, with nearly 80% of them recognizing its improvement. These are all votes of confidence in China's reform and opening up. Third, China will continue to, to do its part to improve international economic governance and the work for a community with a shared future for mankind. We believe that a more open, inclusive, and win-win international environment is in the interests of China and the whole world. Since the global financial crisis in 2008, China has become an important engine of the world economy, contributing over 30% of global growth. Today, the world economy has once again come to a crossroads where protectionism and unilateralism entail high risks and uncertainties. In this context, China will work with other countries to achieve more effective coordination of macroeconomic policies and a robust, balanced, sustained, and inclusive global growth. China will work with other countries to safeguard the multilateral trading system, reform the World Trade Organization as needed, and uphold its values and basic principles of openness, inclusiveness, and non-discrimination. China will work with other countries to deliver a high-quality Belt and Road Initiative. Our efforts to promote connectivity, unleash economic growth, and connect markets will help more countries and regions survive and thrive in the tide of globalization. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the China-US relationship is the most consequential bilateral relationship in the world. It is not only about the well-being of the 1.7 billion Chinese and American people, but also bears on the future of our planet. However, this relationship is now being challenged to an extent rarely seen since its establishment 40 years ago. Demonizing China and inciting confrontation with it have become the politically correct in some circles, of course. And some people even believe that only by decoupling from China can America be made
great again. This is neither rational nor realistic, because to decouple from China is to decouple from opportunity. It is to decouple from a hopeful and developing world. It will not serve the best interests of either the Americans or the Chinese. As for the attempt to demonize China, it will only reveal the dark side of the perpetrators themselves. Over two weeks ago, the 13th round of China-US high-level economic and trade consultations made substantive progress. I believe that we will be able to make a mutually beneficial deal as long as we both show sincerity and reach out to each other on the basis of equality and mutual benefit. This is the only way that our economic and trade cooperation and the overall relations can be restored to the right track. I understand in the Greek language, horesis means gazing at a vision. As we have seen here, this horesis China meeting has gathered a galaxy of business leaders and experts with great vision and insights on China. I hope that at this critical time, the meeting will conclude on a strategic vision and a strong sense of responsibility. And that will bring all of us together for a sound and steady development of China-US relations in the years to come. Thank you all very much. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the Horasis China meeting is coming to an end, and um, you've been a wonderful audience, wonderful contributors, and uh, so many nuggets of wisdom, so many great ideas, so many great proposals, and I would like to echo uh, His Excellency the Ambassador's words before, we need a strong China, we need a strong America, we need a strong world, we need collaboration, and we have to work together. I would like to call the co-host on the stage to join me here on the stage. Again, Rob Goldstein, the president of Las Vegas Sands Corporation, Sherry Waterman, the head of the China Center of the US Chamber of Commerce, and Chairman Xiong Men, the China Federation of Industrial Economics. I would also like to call Yen Wei Hong on the stage, the founder and director of the World Association for Chinese Studies for an announcement. Mr. Yan Wei Hong, please. Uh, good evening, everybody, friends. I thank you so much, uh, everybody here, and also, particularly, I would like to, the reason I'm here is to thank the committee, and thanks to the, uh, our organizer, Frank. You know, Frank, you've done a great job. And also, and meanwhile, I would like to present a, uh, I would call it a masterpiece of the calligraphy to the committee, which we, which, let, let me show you this. Uh, to everyone here. Yeah, Frank, would you like to help me? Give me a hand. No, yes, yeah, this one first. Right, this one first. Uh, this is the, uh, thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the uh, calligrapher, uh, it's a distinguished calligrapher from China. His name is Dr. Zhao. And also on, the, on behalf of the uh, China Biodiversity uh, Conservation and the Green Development Foundation General, Direct, uh, General Secretary, uh, Mr. Uh, Zhou, Zhou Jingfeng. So we'd like to re present this piece to 
our conference. Thank you so much. Thank you. And another piece I would say, you know, I really appreciate Frank has done a great job so many years, you know, for the, for the forum. So this is his name in Chinese calligraphy. And it's, uh, well, thank you, it's a cursive style. Uh, the first piece is the standard style, but the, both of these styles uh, are, were, were started to use 2,000 years ago. You know, when President Trump visited Beijing and the, the uh, Xi, Xi Zhuxi, you know, uh, and uh, said to him that Chinese history has the continuity, it's no stop. That refers to particularly the inscriptions history, I mean the writing history. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, a wonderful present, and I think we have to celebrate culture as well, Chinese culture and the rural culture. Let me now call on um, Chairman Xiong Meng for his uh, final words. Good evening, everyone. From last night to tonight, I found in our discussions, many people say that they hope the voices of many countries' business communities, especially that of China and America, can be heard by Washington. And we are so delighted to have Ambassador Tsui from Washington, D.C. tonight. Thank you so much. And we'd like you to bring our discussions to the world, to the Washington. And thank you, Mr. Reyes. Thanks for your address. We have 15 talks, very complex. I counted up, there are six And we have rich content in our 15 sessions. I've concluded some consensus. The first one is more than the Firstly, in general, Chinese people know more about America than American people know, uh, know about China. So it is important for us to have broader exchanges through different channels and different ways. And I hope that there will be more and, uh, more and deeper understanding between each other and less misunderstanding between our two countries. Secondly, there are more business connections between our industrial and commercial communities than people-to-people -people exchanges. So it is very important to integrate uh, cultural elements in our business exchanges. I hope we can add more activities and content of people-to-people -people exchanges to our economic and trade cooperation in the future. I我刚才跟李希德博博士讲到，我最近在中国见到了很多工艺美术的大师，他们很愿意把传承中国五千年文明的非常精美的艺术品在国际活动中来交流. As I talked to Frank, I met with many masters of arts and crafts in China recently, they are very glad to show their arts that bear the fi uh, 5,000 years of history of China to the whole world. And the 
Thirdly, there are frequent changes in our two economies and societies, while there are inadequate adjustments in our way of thoughts and behaviors to, to get along with each other. 因此，面向未来，立足共赢的主动适应和积极调整很重要。So it is it is significant to make active and positive adjustments, which are future oriented and based on our win-win cooperation. 希望两国更多的广泛合作，而非设置障碍和对抗。I hope our two countries will have more and broader cooperation instead of obstacles and confrontation. 第四个多和少。是两国企业之间自发的合作，开展业务多，而两国行业协会携手为他们搭建桥梁，促进合作的少。Last but not least, there are a lot of voluntary business cooperation between our enterprises, while there are inadequate bridges of cooperation established by our industrial associations. 因此，两国工商协会共同建立促进两国工商界深度合作的平台。和长效机制很重要。It is important for our associations to jointly build more platforms and long-term mechanisms that deepen our cooperation. 希望中国工信联和美国商会在这方面做出表率。I hope China Federation of Industrial Economics and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce will set a good example in this regard. 我作为主办方之一的负责人，这是第五次参加环球中国商会议了。As the head of CFIE and one of the hosts of the Horasis China meeting, this is my fifth time to participate in this. 当然，我们和李希德博士已经合作了十五年。I have worked with friend, uh, Dr. Richter about uh, for 15 years. 从二零一五年的葡萄牙，二零一六年瑞士，二零一七年英国，二零一八年乌克兰，到今年在美国举办这样的盛会。We've held such grand meetings in Portugal 2015, Switzerland 2016, the United Kingdom 2017, and Ukraine 2018. That we're doing what? We're doing a cooperation platform to develop cooperation between countries and societies to talk about our common challenges. What we are doing is to build a platform of communication in which people from the political, commercial, and academic communities across the world can discuss our common challenges and explore opportunities lead us to win-win cooperation. Actually, we are all citizens of the Earth. From the sky, look at the Earth. Are we not like a small bird? If we look down from the universe, our human beings are as small as groups of ants. 而且是热锅上的蚂蚁，因为地球在变暖。Actually, the ants on the hot pan as the earth is getting warmer. 我们人类的命运面临许许多多的严峻挑战和困境，在这个方面，我们很渺小。We are so small that our destinies face various challenges and difficulties. 所以我们呼吁，抛弃零和思维。拒绝相互残杀，让我们努力建设人类命运共同体，共同来开创更加美好的未来。Therefore, we should abandon the zero-sum mentality and refuse to do harm to each other. Let's work together to build a community of shared future for mankind and create a bright future. 非常感谢美国商会，还有多个州的政府，呃，李希德博士，以及金沙酒业集团。还有所有在论坛上精彩发言的演讲者，还有多年来参加我们会议的与会嘉宾，非常感谢你们。I sincere, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to all speakers, to all state governors, and to the、uh, Sense Group and、uh, our guests. Thank you very much. 明年的十月我们再见。Let's meet next year in October. Thanks so much, uh, Chairman Xiong Meng. Um, Jeremy, would you like to continue? Sure, yeah. Try to be brief. Well, let me just say, first of all, it's been a great honor and pleasure to be able to have to be a, have been a participant in this conference over the last two days. Um, a few thank yous. Uh, I don't. I don't. 
want to be repetitive, but I'm going to be. Um, first of all, it's great to have Ambassador Tsui here. To see him uh, not in Washington, but in Las Vegas is a treat. So, and um, uh, I, I said this in my opening remarks yesterday. I want to reemphasize it and really identify with what Attorney General Reyes said. Uh, the work of, uh, of promoting commercial opportunity, of creating jobs, of driving innovation, uh, all of that takes place really at the state level, at the city level, at the town level. I think it's the same in China. Ambassador Tsui spoke about uh, all of the, all of the uh, economic zones in China. Um, and so it's been, I think, terrific to have Attorney General Reyes here this evening. Uh, last night we had uh, Governor Ricketts of Nebraska and the Treasurer, uh, Zach Conine of Nevada. That's been, I think, terrific for this conference and, this pla and, and the platform. So great to have you with us this evening, Attorney General. Um, uh, Frank, we started talking about how to bring Herasis, the Herasis China Conference to the United States, uh, it's probably close to two years ago. It's, it's a while ago, and we, we brainstormed a lot of different ideas, and we had some twists and turns along the way. Um, but you persevered, and uh, I think this conference and the platform is a tremendous credit to you, to your vision, uh, and so thank you to Frank. Um, and, uh, and of course, the next thank you really flows from, from uh, from the gratitude to Frank, because without the support of, of Las Vegas Sands, Rob Goldstein, Andy, the entire team here that has executed this conference so flawlessly, uh, this would not have been possible. So uh, to Las Vegas Sands, and of course to uh, Xiongmeng and, and CFIE, we've had a, a partnership for a long time. We look forward to continuing to build uh, that relationship over the coming months and years. Uh, as well as, uh, I should thank as well the sponsors, three terrific organizations, the U.S. China Business Council, IE University, uh, and also uh, CCG, uh, great partner. And I see Victor right there, so thank you. Um, over the last two days, we have discussed myriad opportunities in the U.S.-China commercial relationship. And, and quite frankly, we live that every, companies on both sides of the Pacific live that every day. Uh, there's just a tremendous amount of business that gets done every day. Uh, some of it we see in the headlines, a lot of it we don't. Um, uh, we've heard from entrepreneurs and innovators seeking to work together to bring groundbreaking new products to consumers. Uh, we've discussed opportunities for cooperation uh, uh, in the context of urbanization, the creation of smart cities, uh, and of course preparing our world to, to deal with climate change. Um, we've talked about financial opening in China um, and joint exploration of investment opportunities, fintech. Um, and, and, and so there's so much that um, is happening together um, and that should continue to happen together. Um, at the same time, uh, I think we all know that the challenges facing the U.S.-China relationship today are very real. Uh, and I think it's not an exaggeration to say that some of those challenges are unprecedented uh, in the modern era of U.S.-China relations. And, and as we would say here in Las Vegas, the stakes are very, very high. Uh, nevertheless, the conversations we've shared over the last two days reveal precisely how much potential for mutually beneficial commercial and collaboration remains untapped. And I will end by saying that because of the significant challenges that have emerged in the relationship, the work of Herasis and platforms like Herasis that build bridges is more important than ever. So we must continue working together to apply the innovation and ingenuity of the global business community to the pressing problems at hand. And in closing, on behalf of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, thank you again for your participation in the Herasis China meeting. After all, you're the ones who make this conference what it is. So thanks to all of you, and we look forward to continuing these conversations in the weeks, months, and years ahead. Thank you. Jeremy, thank you so much. Rob, you got the last word.
Mark. First of all, thank you all for attending. I think the comments in the last few days have been very helpful and a good learning experience. Thank you, Ambassador Shui, for making our evening by honoring us with your presence. We're grateful to have you here. On behalf of Las Vegas Sands, we look forward to keeping the dialogue going. We also look forward to hosting this event in Macau. So I say Macau in the future years. Thank you for attending and for your support. Enjoy Las Vegas. Enjoy your evening. Be safe. Thank you. Thanks again um, to the three co-hosts. Thanks again to everybody. A lot of people were asking me, Frank, where do we go next year? Maybe in two years' time in Macau, but next year, where should we meet? So the announcement here it is. Next year, the event will be held in Yerevan in Armenia. Yerevan, Armenia, 25th to 26th of October. So please note it down. I will send um, a formal invitation in a few days' time together with the report of this meeting. So let's all meet next year in Yerevan. Thank you so much and have a great evening. See you soon again. Thank you.